Amen. Thank you, fellas. And that was a blessing, wasn't it? It's just been good tonight, starting right off at uh, 6 o'clock. We've just had a, a wonderful time. If you're online, thank you for following us. If you'll turn in your Bibles tonight, we have a short time. I have a short time. I'm, I'm getting ready for the, uh, the main event, but uh, I'm excited about what God has for us in these days. Uh, in Daniel chapter 4, I would like you to turn to Daniel chapter 4. If you can, let's stand and... Uh, I want to just read a portion of scripture, Daniel chapter 4 there, and if you'll look at verse 34, it says, At the end of days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me, and I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand uh, uh, or say unto him, What doest thou? At the same time, my reason returned unto me for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and brightness returned unto me, and my, ca uh, my counselors and my lords sought me, and I was established in my kingdom. Excellent and excellent majesty was added unto me, now I want you to look at verse 37 and notice how Nebuchadnezzar is giving his testimony, I believe, of when he got saved, uh, when he trusted uh, and turned his life over to God. Notice this in verse 37. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the King of heaven, all whose works are what? Truth. Truth. Notice that. All who works are, uh, uh, whose works are truth and his ways judgment, and those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. Lord, I pray that you'll bless tonight. Uh, work in this time. Use it for your honor and glory. Thank you for folks that are out tonight. Thank you for all that you've done, and may we glorify you in everything that happens. Meet needs. If there's somebody here to tonight, if there's some person here tonight, that does not know for sure if they died, that they'd go to heaven. May this be the night of their salvation for Christians. Stir us up to do more for you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. America is still going through some difficult days. Uh, but it's not time for pastors and believers to sit down. We've already heard that. Uh, it's time for us to move forward in truth. I understand this. And I will uh, admit, as the executive director of Wake America, I've been shocked at things that are happening in our nation's capital. Uh, I, I've heard things, uh, uh, things have been said to me. Uh, our capital is not like it's ever been. And, uh, and we are in very difficult days. But I, I love what the Bible says when, uh, when Daniel looked at Nebuchadnezzar and he said, but I understand one thing. There is a God in heaven, and there is a God in heaven that knows what's going on in our lives. He's in control of our days. As I began to look at this, I understand this. Pastors, God has given us such a time as this to come to a place that we carry out the same commission 102 separatists set out to accomplish in 1620 during the foundation of America. After years of persecution for their faith, in 1620, 102 separatists embarked upon a dangerous voyage, ocean voyage, their ship, the Mayflower. They sailed through uh, some of the worst winter storms of that era. There were 13 women on board. Three of them were pregnant. There was uh, no privacy, no sanitation. A plague was working its way through the crew. Before they embarked, they they prayed and asked God for safe passage and promised that if they reached their destination that they would establish a base for world evangelization of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Several times during the crossing, they thought they were going to sink, but their prayers before, during, and after the voyage were answered, and they reached Plymouth, Massachusetts. William Bradford wrote, As one small candle may light a thousand, so 
the light here kindled has shown unto many. This group desired to be a light, a candle in the darkness of this world. They chose, if it were necessary, to be as it were stepping stones. Uh, for those who followed them in this same endeavor, uh, them that uh, that is what they would be, Bradford continued, uh, that there was a great hope and an inward zeal uh, they had a, of laying some good foundation or at least to make some way thereunto for the propagation and advancement of the gospel of the kingdom of Christ in the remote parts of the world. Yea, though they should be but even stepping stones unto others for the performing of that great work. And we've had that gift laid in our hand. We had the privilege to have that history. And it's exciting to read back, but we live in a difficult day. We live in a, play, in a time when Christians are quitting, when they're stepping out, they're stepping back. And I, tonight, want to challenge local churches and believers alike, we must come to the place that we put forth truth. Amen. Truth. And we've, we've spoken about it in the Declaration of Independent, uh, Independence. Uh, we have noted four times that God is the God of truth. In that one declaration where they're going to separate to be our own country, they actually make reference to the God of the universe. And folks, that's not popular in our day. And yet I want to just share with you, just take a couple minutes to just share with you some ways that we must, we must emanate truth. And I love that word emanate. Uh, the word emanate has the thought to give out or to emit. I, I like it when it's cold to get around the fire and uh, build that fire up and get those coals and, and that fire emanates warmth. And we gather up there, we put our hands out. Sometimes you want to stick your feet in the fire, amen? Your toes are so cold. But uh, uh, that fire emanates, that fire emanates the warmth. We understand, as Bradford mentioned, a candle. A candle lit and put in a dark place emanates light. It gives out, it emits light. And as Christians today... Let us not sit back. Let us not sit still. Let us not sit down and wait for something to happen. Folks, these are great days to serve the Lord. Amen. These are great days to serve the Lord. Amen. Technology. People are waiting for somebody to share the truth. People are waiting and they're listening. I have people calling me. I, 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 I walk through stores and have people uh, that know me and stop me and ask me questions. And, and uh, boy, it, it is amazing what things are taking place. But Christians are kind of taking their balls and, you know, the, the, the ball and bat and just kind of walking home. Uh, it's almost like we finished the game and it's, we're out of the game and we're just quitting right in the middle of what God wants us to do. I just wrote three thoughts down tonight, and I, I'm stirred by the story that we find in Daniel chapter 4. Nebuchadnezzar, if you read verse 1, he is giving his testimony of what happened when he had a dream. I mean, he had a dream, and, and uh, the dream was about a tree, and I've preached a lot out of this portion. Uh, uh, he had a, tree, a dream about a tree, and, and that tree had limbs that reached out, and the birds, and, and it fed the nations, and just really was a, a powerful uh, a dream that he had, uh, but nobody could interpret that dream. We find that the angels came, or watchers it calls them in the scripture, and cuts the tree down, and uh, boy, that really bothered him. What is this cutting of the tree? And, and uh, he could not understand, yet we find, I love what the Bible says, there was a man in his kingdom and he gives his name, he, he, he shares with us the name, if you look in verse 8, but at, that, at the last came in before me, whose name was 
Belteshazzar, at the last, Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God. And he's giving his testimony. And, uh, and he says, you know, I had gone through the kingdom and I had tried to find wisdom. I had tried to find help. I had tried uh, to, to get wisdom from my men, but nobody could help me. But at last, here comes Daniel. Isn't that exciting when God's man walks in? And it changes what is taking place. Now tonight, I noticed some things that happened as Daniel came in and his life was revealed. There were three things that were emanated in his life. In other words, there were things that came. There, were, was, there was something that came as a result, the truth emanating results that came from his life. Number one, I want to say this, local churches and believers must as Daniel did, we must model truth. We must model truth. Man, I tell you what, if you're saved, people ought to know it. Amen. And it's not time in pride to lift ourselves up in pride, but it's time for us to live for God. I, I noticed this in Daniel chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. Uh, notice what he says about uh, Daniel that came in there in verse 8. He says, according to the name of my God and in whom... Uh, is the spirit of the holy gods. And before him I, I told uh, the dream saying, O Belteshazzar, master of magicians, and, and no secret troubleth thee. Tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen and the interpretation uh, thereof. He, he equates that God was on, there was God was all over Daniel. You say, Pastor, what are you saying? As believers in this day, as Christians in this day, as churches in this day, may we emanate and may we model, may we model truth. May it be a model of our life. Uh, may we go out and, and not in pride be lifted up. Daniel was a man that had an excellent spirit and uh, was there in the midst of the kingdom. And I believe he modeled that thought of truth. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar says, this, this man, there's something different about him. His spirit is different. God is, you know, it's kind of like somebody just getting saved. Nebuchadnezzar didn't know how to say the common terms that we say. You say, look how he said it. But what he was saying, he was saying the best way he can, God is all over this guy. The gods, the spirit of God is on him. And may we, as we live in this society, as churches, as pastors, uh, going in and knocking on doors uh, around our church, but going into capitals alike. May we emanate truth. May we model truth. I, I, uh, uh, truth must be revealed uh, through our daily activities of life. May we, as Bible-believing Christians, strive to do more in these days. It's not time to recline. It's time to climb high. Uh, it, it's not time to quit. It is an exciting time to enhance our outreach for Jesus Christ. It's not time to sit down. It is time to be counted for God, to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as we know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. I want to challenge you. May we just continue in his word. May we continue in his walk. Yes. May we continue in his way. I notice there is a second thing that we find in this portion that we need to come to a place not only that we model truth but that we minister truth boy i i love nebuchadnezzar as a wicked king if you read about what happened uh before and when he went into jerusalem three times and finally destroyed jerusalem and now daniel and shadrach meshach and abednego are there they've been there for a long time if you study it out uh, they've been there for a long time and and now Nebuchadnezzar is going through these things and, and all these different things. He's a wicked king. He, can, uh, he just said, you know, if you can't interpret my dream, I'm just going to cut you in pieces. You know, we'll, do, we'll just get rid of you and find some other wise men and, and, uh, in chapter 2. And we see all these different things that take place. Yet we find that Daniel didn't let things move him. He didn't let the threats uh, he said this, hey, give me some time. Let's, let, let us take some time. He met with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and he prayed. In this time, uh, he took time and he sought the face of Almighty God. And God worked in his life in a great way. 
And there was an emanation in his life of not only that modeling and being an excellent individual, but the modeling of a child of God, a child of the king. You say, Pastor, what happens? He, he goes through the dream and he says, hey, you, you are the one. Uh, you're the tree that got cut down. And uh, God's going to cut you down. And he said, but there's going to be a stump left and God is going to give you some more time to live. And God's going to allow you to have some more time. It was only about a year uh, after that happened. Uh, but uh, Daniel comes to him, and I love what Daniel does in this portion. Uh, Daniel comes to him in wisdom, and if you look at verse 27, he wherefore, O king, after he had told him the interpretation of the dream, after he had helped the king understand his life and all that was taking place and that God was revealing some truth to him, he comes to him and he says, Wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee. Break off of thy sins uh, by righteousness and thine iniquities, by showing mercy uh, to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy tranquility. In other words, God might just lengthen your life. Think about that. That's a good thing. Amen. It's always good to breathe a couple other day, uh, extra days. But he says to Nebuchadnezzar, he says this, you have heard God's message. You have heard the message of the Lord of hosts, the King of kings, my God. And he says this to you, you need to wake up. Now, I, I always, when I read this story, it's amazing to me because this is the book of Daniel, but this is the chapter of Nebuchadnezzar. If you read it, Nebuchadnezzar is saying exactly what happened. Can you imagine Nebuchadnezzar saying, man, I, uh, I, I, I was, a, I was doing my, going my own way. I was not humble. And he says, Daniel tells me about this tree, and I'm the tree, and the angels come down and cut that thing down. I only have a little bit of time. Uh, you know, he gives me some more time uh, to work in the kingdom. And suddenly he realized that after all of this, as we read the, the very last verse of the chapter, I believe Nebuchadnezzar gave his life to God. I believe there was a change in his life. You know, and, and we, have, we have people ask, do you think the president saved? Do you think this man saved? If you read this, this is Nebuchadnezzar's testimony of what happened in his life. And, and he, fi he finally comes. To, you, know, I, you know, he says this, uh, I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven of, of all whose works are truth, his ways, judgment, and those that walk in pride he is able to abase. He comes, and, and, and we, you say, Pastor, what are you saying? If there's ever a day, and honestly, folks, uh, uh, we make excuses, but folks, truth must be revealed through our, the sharing of the gospel. God has given us that opportunity. We're a privileged people. I'm glad I'm saved tonight. Amen? Amen. I've been preaching through Revelation, and boy, I, I'm glad I don't live in that period of that, that, you know, that tribulation period. I'm glad I can read about it and know that I'm going to be in heaven with the Lord. I'm excited about that. But I understand this. We must not sit down. We must not step back. It is a time for us to share the gospel with the lost and dying world. We're going to hear more about the local church in just a minute. Our ministries, must we must share the gospel in American history. We've seen churches advance. We've seen Bible societies uh, created. We've seen missionaries sent out to spread the gospel. Uh, we, we have actually seen in our history the Bible was printed by our government and handed out in, a, in an early nation. We understand that the Capitol building was used for church services. And some of the largest churches met in the Capitol in the early days, uh, history of, um, of America. And we look at all these things, yet we've got to get busy sharing the gospel with the lost Amen. and dying world. We, we need to come to a place that we minister truth. Let me give you one last thought, and I'll step aside. We need to magnify truth. When I, last, uh, when I read those last couple verses, Daniel's testimony magnified his God. Amen. There was an emanation. You say, what do you mean, Pastor? Uh, what happened in Daniel's life was revealed to others around him, not in a haughty way, but it was like warmth from a fire. 
It was like light from a candle. And the king of, of, the Babylonian, uh, of the Babylonians there in that day, he got a hold of it. And he realized that God, that God was over all. He, he, I, I love what he says. He was a very proud person. And notice what he says there at the very end. And those that walk in pride, he is able to obey. Yeah. I got to looking at it. And I understood this, folks, it's not for us to be lifted up. It's for him to be lifted yeah. up. Amen. May we emanate, may we emanate our God. May truth be magnified in our lives. Daniel, a man in captivity, had his name changed. He had his, his geography changed. He had his schooling changed. They wanted to change his food. They couldn't change that. Uh, they wanted to change uh, everything about him. And yet uh, we find that they could not change his walk with God. And boy, it's an amazing thing to read that he magnified the Lord. May we come to a place in these days. Boy, I love that thought. May we magnify the truth. May we magnify the truth. Verse 34. At the end of the days, of course, Nebuchadnezzar became like an animal. He was high and lifted up one day. He was out on his portico, and he looks over the city. And Babylon is, I don't know if you know about it, but Babylon is being, the city of Babylon is being rebuilt as we speak. Uh, the UN and UNESCO and different nations of the world are dumping uh, dollars into, the, into uh, Babylon. And uh, someday it's going to be a great uh, place for headquarters for the Antichrist, according to Revelation. But we, as we read it, uh, boy, it's like in living color. And Nebuchadnezzar walks out on the portico and he just begins to look around and says, look what I've done. Well, I, I'm just, I'm great. I've built all these buildings. Everything has happened and it's all because of me. And Daniel said, hey, you're going to get cut down. God's given you a message. You better wake up. He became as, a, he became as an animal talking about the dew on his body and all that is taking place there. And then there came a day when God let him waken out of his state. Verse 34, and at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lift up mine eyes unto heaven and mine understanding returned unto me and I blessed the Most High. And I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, Amen. and his kingdom is from generation to generation. Well, I tell you what, may we get a glimpse of God today. May we live for God to the place when we get around people, they know there's something different about us. Let us magnify the Lord. It's not about us. It's about him. Amen. Amen. Amen? Yes. May we be about emanating truth today. We need to model it. Amen? Yes. You think about it. We need to model it. We need to minister truth. And we need to magnify truth in these days.